sometimes in the life of a police detective or a beat officer, a case comes across their desk or they're called out to investigate a crime that will stick with them the rest of their lives. Doesn't matter how much they shake it or how many years go by, they just are never able to ever put that case away. Maybe they've even solved the case, but even in that situation, the case sticks with them. Pieces to the puzzle haven't quite fit together. Today, we're going to take a look at a gentleman, a confessed serial killer by the name of William Lewis Reese. Now, what makes William uh, Lewis Reese special is how much the first and only crime that they at, he was actually caught at, how much it ate away at detectives in the state of Texas and in the state of Oklahoma. They were never able to really put the other pieces of the puzzle together until he confessed to try to get leniency on another crime. And only then were they able to put all the pieces together and see the entire picture and understand just what kind of monster was right there in the chair across the desk from them. We have to go back to 1998, 1997, the later part. The later part of 1997, there were a string of disappearances of women in the state of Texas, along with in the state of Oklahoma. Now, seemingly, these women were from all walks of life in all different age groups, aging from the age of 12 all the way to the age of 20. Initially, back in 1997, early 1998, a lot of these women were initially listed as runaways. They just decided to go away. Then the police looked in a little bit closer and they realized, well, they wouldn't have left their car or their belongings behind. And quickly the case was then expanded out. Okay, this is an abduction, a case that we really need to pay attention to. William Lewis Reese. William Lewis Reese was arrested for the abduction, kidnapping, and rape, torture, and dumping of a woman who, by all means, he, he must have believed um, was going to succumb to the elements when he got rid of her. Now, she fought, and believe me, the bravery that she showed is immense. Let's not forget that as an important part of this entire puzzle. But Sarah. Sarah was a young woman, 19 years of age at that time. When she was, she found herself in a situation with a slashed, blown out tire on her car. She had broke down across the street from an international house of waffles, a waffle house let's just say, where she tried to use the payphone to call for assistance. It was going to be some time before anyone that she knew could get there, so she decided to limp her car across the street to the Waffle House and wait there until somebody could arrive to help her change her tire and get her back on the road. Sarah never made it into the Waffle House that day, ladies and gentlemen. Because just as soon as Sarah pulled in, an old, tan, rusty truck pulled up behind hers, almost completely blocking it in, and asked if Sarah needed assistance with changing her tire. Now, this truck didn't stand out to Sarah. It didn't alarm her. The gentleman driving the truck didn't alarm her. So she felt at ease that a good Samaritan was willing to help her change her tire. This truck just incidentally happened to be pulling a horse trailer and Sarah loved horses. So it, maybe there was something they could, they could talk about while he changed the tire that set, set her at the ease. But as soon as Sarah, her guard was down, this man blitzed, attacked her, knocked her unconscious and threw her into the trailer. 
and away he went with her. There were not one, but 13 people eating in the Waffle House that day when this blitz attack came. And if you've ever seen a Waffle House, they're not very shy on not having windows. There are windows all over a Waffle House. But no one said anything. But somebody most definitely saw, saw something, but nobody spoke up. He would take Sarah to a desolate area and have his way with her. And then when he was done with her, he just kind of wandered away for a little bit, letting his guard down, thinking that she was dead. But she survived. William Lewis Reese was arrested and convicted of the crimes that he committed against Sarah. But they weren't ever... He was never tied to other crimes, other more serious crimes that he had committed. And those serious crimes were, ladies and gentlemen, murder. A lot of murders. William Lewis Reese was sentenced to 60 years in the state penitentiary for what he did to Sarah. More than enough time for Sarah to you know, start to put some of the of the you know pieces of her life back together, he was never going to get out to hurt her ever again. He would be a very old man by the time he was ever going to be released from prison. Today, in 2021, he is 62 years old. Now, we come to the second part of the story of who William Lewis Reese is. William Lewis Reese may be involved in as many as nine additional crimes on top of what he confessed to. And why did William Lewis Reese confess to the crimes that he did, the murders of several women? He was trying to gain leniency and make sure that they took the death penalty off the, pay, off the table. He wanted them to let him live out his natural life. He didn't want to die in 10 years, in 15 years, once his appeals were all up. But he knew they had him dead to right on one case. One case in particular was going to put him away forever. That was Tiffany Johnson. His DNA matched the case. He left items behind at the case and a calling card, a phone card that was used back in the 1980s to make long distance and local calls. He, he used that card in the same area as when he killed Laura, Laura Smithers. Ladies and gentlemen, he killed Tiffany, Laura Smithers. Jessica Kane and Kelly Ann Cox. But there are two question marks here. The reason why there are two question marks there, ladies and gentlemen, is because during his confession, he hinted at two other women. One after Tiffany. But he couldn't remember the name of the road or highway that he was on, but he said he was on his way traveling to Oklahoma from Texas, but did not remember the exact location where he had dumped or hidden the body. The same thing happened later on during his talks. He gave a partial confession to one before Jessica. All of these ladies were killed in 1997. Jessica King and Kelly Ann Cox, ladies and gentlemen, their remains were not found until 2016. All those years, the families went without ever knowing what happened to their girls. Jessica King was 17 years old at the time. Kelly was 20. Do not know. 
the age of this person or the name. Nor this one. Nor do they have a body or a location. But this man that you see on your screen right now is definitely a serial killer. And earlier I said he may be involved in as many as nine additional crimes. All of them. Rape and kidnapping. He won't talk anymore because he wasn't able to give them enough of a confession, ladies and gentlemen, to take the death penalty off the table. He didn't meet his requirement as part of the plea agreement. And in court, when he was supposed to stand up and admit to his crimes, he sat there smiling the entire time. A cold, sadistic sociopath and a serial killer. How many more victims are out there of William Lewis Reese? We know for sure that Sandra is live. She's been working to put the pieces of her life back together ever since what happened to her. And she's lucky. She very well may be the only remaining surviving victim of William Lewis Reese. Thank you.